Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the DC TV shows and Comic Con. So, today we got a lot of stuff to talk about. There is some big news to do with Comic Con. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, yeah, I went to Comic Con last year. You guys probably saw my news coverage of it. Obviously, I did all the trailer breakdowns when I was in San Diego, when I was in Los Angeles, and I met up with Paigey. It was super good. I absolutely loved the event, and I was so looking forward to going back this year. I had my plane tickets booked and everything. I was going to go. And so this is the first time in Comic-Con's 50-year history that the event will not go on this year. So it's obviously an, kind of a no-brainer at this point. We were all expecting it, but I'm very, very sad, to be honest. And that's because I loved the event so much, and I was really looking forward to going back. But... I mean, in light of uh, the coronavirus and everything going on, it makes complete sense that they don't want to hold this massive Comic Con event where there's hundreds of thousands of people. So the news came today that they were officially cancelling Comic Con for 2020. So Comic Con was supposed to be running from July 22nd, which is preview night where they would have showed the shows, like the new shows, the pilot episodes, like last year they showed Batwoman saw it twice it was amazing and this year I think they were going to show the Superman and Lois show that's what I presumed and then it would run on from the 23rd officially to the 26th of July so obviously what happens at Comic Con you have all these massive panels there are so many panels you can't get to all of them there is just way too many but there are some amazing ones some ones that you cannot miss obviously like the big ones in Hall H where you have like Disney, Warner Brothers, you get to see the Avengers, like, or Top Gun, like they showed the Top Gun trailer, they showed the Terminator trailer, and then you had Linda Hamilton, you had Tim Miller, and you know, Tom Cruise came on the stage, it's incredible, it's insane. But then obviously in regards to what we cover on this channel, the DC TV shows, they are the best panels, and it's like one whole day, the Saturday, which is dedicated to the DC TV shows, and they actually do the interviews on the same day. So last year I got to cover some of the interviews. I was supposed to go interview Grant Gustin, go interview the Flash cast as well as the Supergirl cast. But it just so happens that Saturday is basically the Arrowverse day. And they have their interviews at basically the same time as the panels. So I made the sacrifice to go see the panels and, you know, get all the information that we need. And see the actors in real life, even if I can't talk to them face to face and talking about the flash cast but I actually got to go to the super gold cast panel but also I got to interview the super gold cast which was just the best experience and that was one of the reasons why I was super excited to go back again this year to interview the super gold cast but also interview the flash cast and obviously the panels are just amazing because you get to see all the actors in real life and that is just a massive freak out moment for everyone no matter if you're press or you're just a normal attendee it's the best. So the DC TV shows go every year and what happens every year is they do their panel, they have their cast members on the stage talking about the shows, they are interviewed, they are asked questions from the audience, from the moderator, whoever it was. Like last year, Supergirl's panel was moderated by John Cryer, which was amazing and a very nice surprise. And so basically what happens is they show the new trailer, the new footage for the new season, and that's why Comic Con is such a big event. Number one, you get to meet all the actors and you get to be at the panels when you talk about your favorite shows or your favorite films that are coming up or have been on and, you know, they're making new seasons of. But you get to see the first look footage at all of the new seasons in regards to DC TV. And that was one of the best things. Like, I was sitting with Paigey last year, we were watching all the DC TV panels all day long. And we had to sit through like a bunch of random panels just to save our space so we could see Batwoman, then we could see The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, like whatever was on. So it's totally worth it and you get to see that first look footage and everyone freaks out and it's just such a great environment. And so basically at that same time, obviously if you can't attend the event, they release the trailer online. So always, nevertheless, if you don't go to Comic Con or if you do, 
Comic Con is always a massive thing for Arrowverse fans and people who watch the shows because they release the trailer every year. So, the big question is, are they going to release the trailers by that point and are they going to stick to, you know, their normal schedules? Before we get to that, let's go over to Comic Con's page and we'll read out a few of the statements because I think it's important that you guys know what they're saying. So, the current situation requires exceptional measures. Comic Con announces plans in light of COVID-19 pandemic. For the first time in its 50-year history, San Diego Comic Con, the organizers behind the annual pop culture celebration, announced today with deep regret that there will be no Comic Con in 2020. The event will instead return to the San Diego Convention Center from July 22nd to July 25th in 2021. Recognizing that countless attendees save and plan for the conventions every year and how many exhibitors and stakeholders re rely upon its events for a major portion of their livelihoods, they had hoped to delay this decision in anticipation that COVID-19 concerns might be lessened by the summer. Continuous monitoring of health advisories and recent statements by the governor of California made it pretty clear that it would not be safe to move forward with the plans this year. Similarly, WonderCon Anaheim which would have been held in April, will return to the Anaheim Convention Center in March next year. And so in addition to their conventions, Comic Con has planned a new renovation of their building and is going to be opening the Comic Con Museum in the summer of 2021. However, this is obviously going to affect that as well and the opening which they planned. So this is obviously in links to what happens with Comic Con because that is a big thing of it. You know, it's a new event, it's a new place that they're opening. So, anyway, let's continue. So, SDCC also announced that individuals who purchase badges for Comic Con will be able to have refunds and etc. like that. So, you know, if you did actually book anything to do with Comic Con, like a hotel or, you know, a badge or anything, you will be fine. And there is potential that they will transfer these badges to 2021 when you guys can go back when it's all safe so anyway that's what they've said roughly there is a bigger statement you guys can go read it but let's quickly talk about what it means for the dc tv shows so in regards to what we normally get we normally get the trailer with the panel so on the saturday we get all the trailers back to back to back and they're released paralleled with the online release so i'm thinking maybe comic con might do something where they do like an online convention there was like a home con the other day that some of the supergirl cast members took part in so maybe the cw the arrowverse as a whole maybe some of the cast members set up their own little con where they talk about the shows what's coming up next because maybe they've read the scripts because they're gonna have time to make these scripts the writers so no problem about that they can have their writers rooms in online calls and such like that so i would say they're definitely going to have the season planned out and what's going to be happening so no problem about that they can all you know read them and you know get to know it before they can go back to film and so obviously the question is are they going to be able to go back to film before say when comic con was supposed to happen towards the end of july so normally they go back to film around the end of June or early July. So there's obviously potential that they could get back to Vancouver to film around, you know, early July. I'd say it's probably more likely to be late July slash early August. So I would say if we're expecting a trailer, probably towards the end of August, maybe early September it could be in the end. I wouldn't be surprised about that. And this would go for all of the shows past Supergirl. We've talked about the trouble that Supergirl's in right now where they're probably not going to be able to actually return to film anything until about November time due to Melissa's maternity leave. Unless anything can be sorted out where the rest of the cast can film before Melissa comes back and they shoot their scenes. And then, you know, they do release Supergirl towards, you know, January time where the mid-season starts. I guess that could be a possibility and I think that's very much so in the mix right now. But don't be expecting Supergirl to go back filming the same time as all these other shows and there shouldn't be a trailer because there's going to be no footage or anything like that. But maybe they do do the panels online which would be very interesting. But anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
icy road.